Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Let's Code with Shiva. In today's video, we're diving into a very exciting topic, how to get started with Microsoft Azure OpenAI. Whether you're a developer, data scientist, or simply curious about the potential of AI, this tutorial will help you get an understanding of the powerful capabilities of Azure OpenAI and how to leverage them in your applications. Now, before we begin, let's understand what OpenAI and Azure OpenAI are. OpenAI is a leading AI research lab known for its advanced large language models, LLMs for short, like GPT, and other generative AI models like DAL-E, Whisper, etc. Azure OpenAI, on the other hand, is a Microsoft Cloud offering from Azure Cognitive Services that provides a safe and reliable way to access OpenAI models hosted in Azure. Now, to get started, we'll need an Azure account. If you already don't have one, head over to azure.com and sign up for a free account. Once you're in, you'll have access to a variety of resources and services via the Azure portal. You can access it at portal.azure.com. And once you're in, let's search for Azure OpenAI. As you can see, it opens the Azure Cognitive Services. Its various offerings are mentioned here in the left pane, as you can see here. I'll try posting more tutorials on these soon. So stay tuned and subscribe to my channel to get notified. Now, let's access Azure OpenAI. This opens the dashboard here. This dashboard will help us create and manage our resources. Now, let's create our OpenAI resource by clicking the blue button. You can also click the Create button with the plus on top, as shown here. For now, the Azure OpenAI service has limited access, and you'll be able to fill a form that is given in the Microsoft Docs. You can head out to Microsoft Learn for more information. I'll also put the link to request access down below in the description. Now, once you get access, you'll be able to create the OpenAI resource in Azure. Let's add the resource group name. And next, let's add the region. I'm choosing West Europe as it has the models that I'd like to access. If you want to know a little bit more on what models are available where, I'll give that link in the description below. Let's also give it a name. And only standard pricing tier is available. You can look at the full pricing details here in the link. You can also restrict access to your resource by configuring virtual networks. For now, I'm providing complete access. Now let's create the resource. And it's getting deployed. And it's complete. Let's go to the resource by clicking on this blue button, go to resource. This takes us to the instance dashboard. So in the left panel, you can see that you'll be able to control different endpoints, deployments, keys, etc. Let's go to model deployments. The models and deployments can be controlled via the Azure OpenAI Studio. You can go to the Azure OpenAI Studio from the link in the overview tab. Let's click on it in a new tab. It offers a very good UI for us to play around with our model. So we'll be able to look at what models are available, what deployments are active, and we'll also be able to use the playground here. Let's see how to do this. For accessing and leveraging OpenAI services, it is important to have a model to choose a model and deploy them. A model is an instance of the generative AI capability that has been trained for specific applications. As we know, generative models can be used for a multitude of applications, be it content generation, summarization, semantic search, sentiment analysis, entity recognition, code translations, image processing, audio processing, etc. Instead of one model catering to every application, OpenAI has mo different model series that cater to each of these different use cases. For example, we have GPT-4, GPT-3.5, embeddings, moderations for a multitude of NLP-related and language-related use cases. For image-related use cases, we have the DAL-E series. And for audio to text conversions, we have the Whisper series. But according to our use case, we'll be able to select our models. For now, we have the GPT-3.5 and text embedding models available for us in this region. Let's click on the GPT 3.5 model and let's click on deploy. Let's give it a name. We can also select rate limiting for a particular model. 
The pricing is based on tokens, but be careful while setting this up because it can have a direct impact on the cost. So you'll also be able to see the rate limiting in terms of requests per minute as well here. Now let's create the deployment. And this is quite fast. And we can see that the model has been deployed. Under deployments, we'll be able to see that the model has been deployed. Now let's have a quick look at it in the completions playground. Now, since GPT-35 Turbo is a completions model, let's click on completions under playground. And we're also able to see that there's something called parameters on the right pane. So I'll be posting on how to use these parameters for getting efficient results in the next video. Do subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified when I post it. Let's just look at an example where we're trying to generate a quiz. Let's click on generate. And we can see that OpenAI is smart enough to understand the paragraph that has been given for context and from it generate questions and also give multiple choices out of it. In fact, it's so intelligent that it also gives us assumptions that it is taken into account. Cool, right? Now let's try something else. Let's ask it a direct question. So we're asking what is the difference between OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. Let's click on generate. As you can see here, our model is giving us the answer. OpenAI itself gives us a Python library that includes a predefined set of classes for API resources that initialize themselves dynamically and helps us with a lot of pre-built functions that help us interact with OpenAI API. So we can install this using pip. Let's install it. Here I'm using a Jupyter notebook in PyCharm. I've already posted a video on how to install this in both Windows and Mac. I'll try embedding the link here and also in the description below for reference. And the code itself is very easy. You can click on view code in the Azure AI Studio to look at sample code snippets. It offers various options like C Sharp, Python. It even has the curl option that we can use in Postman and as a simple REST API call. So let's just copy the Python version and paste it in our editor. One important factor here is the API key. So we can access it in the portal itself. The key is also available here as you can see. Let's copy it and paste it. Let's just give it a sample SQL code for it to explain to us. Uh, I'm initializing it in the variable called text. In addition to explanation, we've also, uh, we're also asking it on why people may be interested in this particular query and this particular time period that is mentioned in the query. So let's give the text variable in prompt. And the response usually comes up in a JSON format like this. So you can see the answer will be under the zeroth index of choices and in text. So let's print that. It clearly explains what the SQL query does. And as we had requested it, it also gives us reasoning as to why someone may be interested in this time period and why a company may be interested in this particular query. Very cool, isn't it? And with this, we come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed this video on getting started with Azure OpenAI and writing Python code snippets for leveraging the OpenAI APIs. Do let me know in the comments below what you thought about this. And of course, do like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Stay safe, stay healthy.